Transtibial, below knee, amputation. A brief video. Following the reports of Burgess and others who have performed transtibial amputations successfully in more than 85% of their patients with peripheral vascular disease, this procedure has become the most common amputation. The importance of preserving the patient's own knee joint in the successful rehabilitation of a patient with a lower extremity amputation cannot be overemphasized. Although many variations in technique exist, Basically all procedures may be divided into those for non-ischemic limbs and those for ischemic limbs. In most instances, myoplastic closures are performed, but some authors have advocated the use of the firmer stabilization provided by myodesis in young, active individuals. In ischemic limbs, tension myodesis is contraindicated because it may compromise further an already marginal blood supply. Also, a long posterior myocutaneous flap and a short or even absent anterior flap are recommended for ischemic limbs because anteriorly the blood supply is less abundant than elsewhere in the leg. Burgess. Position that the patient supine on the operating table, do not apply a tourniquet. Prepare and drape the limb so that an above knee amputation can be performed if bleeding and tissue viability are insufficient to permit a successful transtibial amputation. For ischemic limbs, Burgess recommended amputation 8.8 .8 to 12.5 cm distal to the line of the knee joint. Outline a long posterior flap and a short anterior one. The posterior flap should measure 1 cm more than the diameter of the leg at the level of bone division. Reflect as a single layer with the anterior flap the deep fascia and periosteum over the anteromedial surface of the tibia. Divide the anterolateral muscles down to the intermuscular septum, ligating and dividing the anterior tibial vessels and perineal nerves as encountered. Section the tibia, and at a level no more than 0.9 to 1.3 cm higher, section the fibula. Reflect as a single layer with the anterior flap the deep fascia and periosteum over the anteromedial surface of the tibia. Divide the anterolateral muscles down to the intermuscular septum, ligating and dividing the anterior tibial vessels and perineal nerves as encountered. Section the tibia, and at a level no more than 0.9 to 1.3 cm higher, section the fibula. Dissect the soft tissues from the posterior aspect of the tibia and fibula distally to the level of the posterior transverse skin division, and separate and remove the leg, ligating and dividing the nerves and vessels. Carefully round the tibia and form a short bevel on its anterior and medial aspects. Tension myodesis is not recommended in this instance. Bevel and tailor the posterior muscle mass to form a flap and carry it anteriorly, suturing it to the deep fascia and periosteum. Dissect the soft tissues from the posterior aspect of the tibia and fibula distally to the level of the posterior transverse skin division, and separate and remove the leg, ligating and dividing the nerves and vessels. Carefully round the tibia, and form a short bevel on its anterior and medial aspects. Tension myodesis is not recommended in this instance. Bevel and tailor the posterior muscle mass to form a flap and carry it anteriorly, suturing it to the deep fascia and periosteum. Obtain meticulous hemostasis. Place a plastic suction drainage tube deep to the muscle flap and fascia and bring it out laterally through the skin 10 to 12.5 cm proximal to the end of the stump, if preferred, a through and through Penrose drain may be used, but it is more difficult to remove. Fashion the skin flaps as necessary to obtain smooth closure without too much tension. Trim any dog ears sparingly, Otherwise, the circulation in the skin may be disturbed. Close the skin with interrupted non-absorbable sutures, figure. 
Thanks for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.